Hello again everyone, this is part two of the bootleg X customization effort and since I happen to have the original one now in hand and a legit copy of that I don't need two of the exact same things so this has now become a more thorough toy modification project as I'm gonna change this into the second armor look for Mega Man X2. In order to get there we first have to break the toy down into as many parts as I can in order to uh, make it a little easier so obviously we have the neck and the shoulders separated. I can't really pull the uh, shoulders completely out without breaking the torso. I'm not going to do that since I don't know how yet. Uh, the wrist and hand parts have been separated. Those easily pop off. Same with the torso. Top part is a ball joint. Bottom part is like a weird cylinder with a little peg in there which everything tabs into. Uh, in terms of the bottom part of the hips, everything is just another ball joint that kind of uh, pulls apart with a little bit of effort there. As in the little cinder parts have a little extra flashing, the molding wasn't that great, so that explains why weren't, they weren't a perfect fit. It's being which the torso itself doesn't quite connect properly, doesn't quite properly close, which might explain why things weren't exactly moving so great on the legs either, at least not perfectly compared to one another. It's a little off center, so that explains a bit. Good to know, if you know how, you can probably fix this. I don't know how at this time, so we're just kind of work around it as we can. Uh, in terms of the legs, uh, once again, because it's a softer plastic, they tend to pop out pretty easy. The kneecaps, unfortunately, like I said in the last video, they're a little oversized for what they are, so they do pop out the back a bit. does make it a little harder to work with and will actually bring me quite a bit of problems as this particular video goes on, but uh, it's a no problem at least. And in terms of the feet, well, they're functional enough, they're reasonable enough. Not a perfect fit again for everything, but hey, it still works. The only thing I will note is the reason you don't see me separate this part is because it is extremely difficult to get them back in, so we're going to skip that part a bit and kind of work around it as best we can. Now the first thing I did is I went and tackled the one thing that I didn't need to do any real heavy editing on, which was the, both the uh, wrist guards as well as the gloves in this case. So starting with the wrist guards, which are initially blue, I gave them a coat of white primer in order to get some paint on there. And using some acrylic stuff that I happen to have on hand, I just gave those stuff an appropriate paint job where it, had, where it needed to. So basically mostly white, the little parts closer to the wrist are going to be blue, and while well, the gloves are red in this case. Uh, in hindsight, for the overall project, I will say, yes, I really should have invested in some little more of a high-grade acrylic paint there. But uh, due to time constraints and just a general lack of uh, place with proper modeling paints, I kind of had to make do with what I had here. Not the cheapest paints in hand, but uh, definitely they needed a little more thinning out than I probably uh, gave them in this case overall, and that's something I unfortunately have to say throughout the project. Uh, a little bit of a learning curve. If the time permits, I will definitely get myself something like an airbrush set should I decide to do more of this stuff more seriously in the future. Now, one of the first things I did in terms of really starting the sculpting process down was technically not sculpting as mo sculpting at all, as I actually use a bit of thermoplastic material called Thibla in this case, in order to kind of uh, make out some of the uh, broader, kind of more uh, cylindrical or kind of flat shapes in the figure overall. So, as you can see, what I was planning on the torso here is I started cutting out a series of thinner, kind of uniform strips, and I was going to use my heat gun in order to do heat it up and while it heat up it makes it more adhesive to general things especially other plastics and I was gonna just generally stick them on there while heat it up let them cool and they'd stay attached and hopefully that would be a lot faster way of doing straight line parts including the shoulder bits as you can see here at this point this is before I realized the fatal flaw on this being that as it turns out while it can take straight lines and such pretty easily and even when you heat it up, it does get kind of more pliable and closer to a little more of a putty-like substance, so you can certain sculpt, definitely sculpt some certain details out of it. The issue I would come up with later is that this stuff actually sands terribly, especially around the edges. They advertise, I believe, that they this stuff is supposed to sand out pretty well, which if you fill it with enough coats of paint after to cover it, sure, you'll be fine, but uh, in terms of trying to clean up the detail, no, it was going horribly. It did not work well at all. And in hindsight, I should have sculpted this stuff in the first place, and it would cause me a lot less headache. A lot of the issues I'll have with the figure later on, which I'll kind of point out, are specifically because I couldn't sculpt it. So thankfully, I had uh, at least enough wherewithal that another thing which I picked up and pretty much bought for the purpose of handling the more organic shapes was a material called epoxy sculpt. For those that aren't familiar with that, that's a two-part epoxy where you kind of mix in the stuff together 
and during the first bit as I messed around and learned with it the first hour or so it's still really sticky it's very pliable takes shape and detail pretty easy after the first hour some change it tends to harden a little more it doesn't stick nearly as well I find but it takes details really well which is uh, good when you're trying to clean some stuff or trying to etch in something in hindsight I would have done should have done that for the shoulders in the first place and I would have gotten better results but hey hindsight it's 2020 and all that this particular video takes place after the first round of sculpting has taken place and everything has hardened at this point. In terms of mixing the material, I learned after this one that in terms of what you need to mix, unless you happen to be doing something that is quite large, mix less than you thought. It's better to mix less and have to mix a little bit more later than to mix too much and uh, end up with uh, this little block here of completely unusable dried up material. While it's a good way to see exactly how this stuff looks when drying on its own, uh, unfortunately, it is a little bit of a waste of material, and I didn't order a huge, like a huge tub of each, so uh, it's a bit of a quick learning lesson. Now, in terms of what I managed to do on that first round, uh, as you can see, the shoulder pad, I did my first attempt to try to clean that up. The head has a little bit of stuff on the helmet there. The knee pads have been worked on. I did a little more on the bottom of the boots, and uh, basically, it was more just a kind of a very quick trial and error just to see how the material worked. Everything that was on there did harden really nicely. Everything, thankfully, because of the gray tone, makes it easy to work with, although I need to go back in and do some more cleaning, obviously, at this point. But uh, in case you're wondering why I don't happen to have that second boot floating on there, uh, here's the point of evidence. That kneecap issue I was mentioning earlier, as it turns out, was because a piece of it on the bottom half, half of it had completely broken off on one side. What this ended up doing is every time I kept trying to push it in later, the, the knee joint would basically buckle and not actually properly fit in. I did end up fixing this down the line uh, through a little bit of use of a little more thermoplastic and some crazy glue to help tighten everything up a lot more but uh, let everyone be aware those joints are very very soft and easy to break. And this next little bit takes place after the second round of sculpting at this point. While I wasn't unfortunately able to fix the knee at this particular juncture there, at least I was able to sculpt in a lot of details, namely uh, finish cleaning up the bits on the boots there, the knee pads are a lot more full and flush at this point, and the bottom of the boots are there, the helmet fins are a lot sharper, I was able to fill in a number of gaps that I noticed on the shoulder pads and tried to do a little more to clean them up. Uh, unfortunately for reasons mentioned with the table, I wasn't able to completely clean them up, but at least better than before. And after taking everything back apart again, uh, now uh, a little more cleanup, a little more sanding in order to uh, get things as smooth as I could get them, or at least as I could visibly see them at the time there. Uh, the next step from here was actually to go uh, take them outside, give them a quick primer and set them up for paint. Give a few more days in order to do a few more thin layers of paint, or at least as thin as I get the stuff I happen to have a hand. Things are looking a lot more colorful now, and after that and putting some sealer, lo and behold, we have at least my take on a second armor for X. Well, this has certainly been an enjoyable little detour from my normal Retro Ninja gaming stuff at this point. Uh, just as a general aside, I do happen to enjoy messing around with a little more artistic adventures, including sculpting stuff, and having not done this in ages, this was quite fun for me to do. Even if the results aren't exactly perfect, if I'm being totally honest, I know the uh, sculpts could have been cleaned up a little more, and definitely the paint job. Uh, could have done a lot work or a lot better work if I had an airbrush as well as a uh, or at least had better thin some of these paints out But still all in all I enjoyed the process I'm okay with the results for now. Maybe one or two things I might fix later, but that's on my own time and off camera and I have something that generally is a little amusing thing for my own personal collection that isn't available normally and With that I thank you all for watching me and enjoy me on this little detour and catch you all later